I hate mine the stupid guys. reload icon on my screen all day. Uh, mine no, you just left click once and then it's gone. Okay, who do I have? Flannel. Picking two. Kirby. Zoriel, XQM, Flannel, Mike Bean. What? Fall back! Phil should have been there somewhere, but... Yeah, Phil dropped out yes. before we did Nightmares. Awesome. Okay then. Well, welcome to my communications class, children. Yeah. How are we all? How was your, your day at school so far? Quite entertaining. Piece of cake. Awesome. Well, uh, spoiler alert, you don't get to do anything but listen to me talk for this section. It is, however, much quicker than all the others. I don't know, Nightmares was pretty quick. <laughs> that was synchronized sitting. That was, <laughs> that was pretty creepy. That was incredible. That was it automatically stands up again. Right, so... Like I don't remember how to sit, so I'm gonna stand. It's, uh, apostrophe. Or the at symbol. Nice. Apostrophe. Good work, guys. Okay. Good. This is, well, this is the first class that sat throughout, so that's fine. Okay. Communications. Uh, basically, I'm gonna go over some One. things that Return we have noticed uh, being wrong with the way that people are communicating, how they're using radios and so on and so forth. Um, just to clear it up for everybody so that everyone knows what they should be doing and when. Um, to start with is communication inside vehicles, um, starting with something that's fairly new uh, and is kind of only still really being trialled, um, it's not officially set in stone. Um, when we are travelling in a convoy of vehicles, what we'd like all of the drivers to do from now um, is to set their radio to frequency 30. Um, this will then be known as the convoy frequency. Um, that then allows um, information to be passed to all of the convoy um, instantly. So if the convoy starts or stops or makes a turn, um, the driver at the front will then radio that to the rest of the convoy and then all the drivers know what they should be doing um, and hopefully will also know why if the driver that makes the call has the time to give that much information. Um, you can also use it for, you know, well, we're stopping because we're taking contact and then all the drivers pass that on to the people that they're in the vehicle with so then instantly everybody knows what's going on without having to go up through HQ and then down to the squad leads and then down to the fire team leaders from them. Okay. Um, additionally, when in vehicles we would like people to be changing their voice volume down to whispering. Um, if you are in a Humvee with a group of people and you're at Whisper, everyone in that Humvee will be able to hear you. Um, but people outside of it won't. won't. Um, this stops people talking over each other. This stops vehicle conversations crossing over each other and everything getting very confusing. Uh, if you need to speak to somebody that's outside of the vehicle, you can turn yourself back up again. Say what you need to say and then go back down to Whispering. Um, and just We're trying to keep things clearer and cleaner. Um, so we're not having all sorts of overlapped conversations and stuff when we're trying to get things sorted, which we usually are when there's a lot of vehicles close together. Um, for larger vehicles like Chinooks and Ghost Hawks and so and such, when we've got uh, multiple teams and squads and whatever in the same vehicle, um, usually there will be fire team leaders, squad leaders or HQ or whatever trying to have various conversations over their radios. Um, and trying to have a radio conversation can be incredibly difficult and you've got 20 people sat in the same helicopter as you chatting about what they watched on TV yesterday. Um, so sometimes uh, the person having the conversation might need to say, they'll just say clear comms or check check or even as simple as shut up. Um, and what you need to do then is immediately recognize you've said that and stop talking. Um, doesn't matter if you've just thought of a particularly hilarious joke. Um, someone is trying to have a conversation that will help everybody because they're trying to get something sorted out and you need to stop talking so that we can speed that along. Um, you know, you can tell your jokes later. If people are trying to get stuff sorted and moving along, then you getting in the way of that just stops everybody having a good time. Uh, is that alright? Yeah, that's fine. Good. Right, contact callouts. Um, some people, um, we have actually been told that 
people as a contact report have been saying things like contact over there which obviously is completely useless because there's a lot of there to be over in um, so there's really no point in saying it and if you're saying stuff like contact over there it's quite likely well you're not imparting any useful information One, really and you could well be talking over somebody who is so if you can't give very specific if you can't give anything more detailed than that then don't say anything at all the minimal amount of information you can impart while still being useful is you know front back left or right um, and then that's for contacts within 50 meters of you uh, when you're in extreme danger you know you say contact front and start shooting at them um, if you've got a little bit more time if they're you know 100 meters away you can give a vague compass direction it's a little bit more helpful because um, then even people from other teams that are facing different directions will know what you're talking about um, then beyond that you can scale it up to bearings and then you can give distances and then you can start talking about what they're stood next to if you have that sort of information to give so you know vehicles or colours of houses and stuff like that but contact over there is worse what? than not saying all anything back. at all um, when you are traveling be it in vehicles or on foot and you stop for more than a few seconds uh, usually if you're in a vehicle the procedure should be to dismount uh, and then get up 360 security uh, and what you need to do when you put up security is pick a sector and then call it out to the rest of your team so that they know you're watching the direction that you're watching in um, so it's as easy as you know pick you, you stop just turn to face the direction say southwest and then just watch southwest uh, and then if everyone else does the same in different directions then the fire team leader can he'll know which way everyone's looking he'll know if he's got any gaps that need to be filled in in his security he'll also know if anyone's looking in a direction that's kind of pointless and he can reposition them to make them more useful um, I guess it's fairly basic but some people haven't been doing it so Return just remind everyone um, the next issue has two sides to it um, but it's the problem of uh, crossing in front of friendly weapons now if you are going to knowingly cross in front of a friendly weapon what you need to say is crossing your line of fire um, so that the person that you're about to run in front of knows not to shoot otherwise they're going to hit you um, and then that causes arguments and disputes and things of oh you shot me and it's like well you shouldn't have been there in the first place and blah blah blah, blah. it's just not worth it um, but if you shout something out it can help prevent the issue so you should whenever possible but counter to that if you know you're about to run in front of someone's weapon why are you doing that um, if you can avoid it at all you should because it's just inviting unnecessary risk um, there's you know there's only if it's an absolute emergency then sure uh, run in front of somebody's weapon like if a grenade just landed in front of you feel free to sprint off just make sure you call it out that you're moving if you've got the time so you don't get shot um, but another side to it is that if you are not level with or in front of the other members of your team you shouldn't be firing your weapon anyway really because you're just going to be firing past or over friendlies which is unnecessarily risky so the two sides to this are people shouldn't be firing from behind other people and also people shouldn't be running in front of weapons but if both of those things fail then crossing the line of fire can help prevent friendly fire incidents if everything else fails does that make sense? yep okay good um, bounding um, we should all be fairly familiar with what it is it can either be done um, in pairs or you know as a buddy system like two guys or it can be done with a half teams or teams or squads basically the process of one group of people covers and another one runs and then they stop and cover while the other people catch up and then you bound or leapfrog or caterpillar or whatever you want to call it um, towards where you're going um, now during that process you need to be communicating what it is you're doing 
so that everyone knows where you're up to uh, and what's happening. So if you're going to be the team that's covering, you need to announce that you're covering so that you're ready for that team to move and that you're ready to keep them safe. Um, if you're going to be the team that's moving, once you've heard the call of covering, you need to say, okay, moving, so that the covering team knows to pay attention. And then when the moving team gets where they're going, they need to say set and covering One, so that up. the team that was covering knows that they can catch up. Um, it's not that complicated, but if you don't do it, you can end up with ridiculous situations like two teams covering each other, the front team wondering why the back team hasn't caught up yet, and the back team wondering what's taking the front team so long. Um, or you can end up with two teams moving at the same time, nobody's covering anybody and you'll get shot and killed. Um, so it's not that complicated just to say at what point in the bounding you're up to, uh, but it can save a lot of confusion and keep things running smoothly. So if you're in charge of a bounding maneuver you need to make sure that you're um, communicating properly with the other half of it, basically. Uh, Frag grenades. One, if you feel the need to throw a frag grenade, the first thing you need to do is call frag out. So that everyone knows that that's what you're about to do. Um, if you can, you should then give a second pause or so. Because um, it could be you're about to throw a grenade in through a window um, just as a friendly runs into the same house. Um, so you call frag out and then you wait for a second, someone else calls out, no, stop. Someone's just gone in there. You know, you've avoided a friendly fire incident. If you wait a second or so, and nobody seems to think it's a bad idea, you throw the grenade, uh, and then keep an eye on it, see where it goes. Hopefully it'll land more or less where you want it to go. But because it's armor, and there's no indication of where stuff's going to land, um, grenades can bounce off of rocks or trees or windowsills or doorways, um, and they can go wrong. If it goes wrong really badly in such a way that it lands in within a dangerous distance of friendlies, um, for the next few seconds between the grenade landing, or at least the grenade going wrong, sorry, and the grenade exploding, um, you need to repeat the words bad frag over and over and over again until it explodes. Um, do not stop saying it until the grenade has exploded. Because even at the first call of bad frag, your whole team gets up and runs off and you get to a safe area, you don't know that someone isn't going to move into range of the grenade in the next few seconds. Um, so you need to be giving out the information um, as much as you possibly can for as long as it might be needed just to avoid any potential incidents. Does that make sense? Yep. Good, yep. good. Yep. Finally, for communications, um, is the comms hierarchy. Now this is something that's been discussed quite recently um, as a result of Flannel's medical script, which is brilliant by the way. Um, but Round now, up. because of the new situation where anyone who is down cannot use a radio, um, we've had to put a hierarchy in place for um, when leadership gets wounded, who does the communication responsibility then fall to, which is why you may now see um, FTLs carrying long-range radios because the hierarchy will be if a squad lead goes down uh, it then becomes the responsibility of fire team one lead to become the point of communication towards HQ for that squad. If fire team one lead then goes down then fire team two lead needs to become the point of communication for that squad um, until either fire team one lead is back up or squad lead is back up and normal, communi normal communication can resume um, we have a similar hierarchy in place for short-range radios within squads. Um, if a fire team leader goes down, the default is that communication responsibility uh, will fall to the auto rifleman. So if the FTL goes down, the auto rifleman will take over and will inform the squad leader that this has happened. Um, it is, however, for us, it's been left to the fire team leader's discretion. Um, so if they feel like they have someone in their team that they know will be able to handle taking over very well uh, and they would prefer to give it to them, they'll say so at the start of the night. Um, and then if the fire team leader goes down, then communication and leadership will fall to the person that the fire team leader designated before you all started. 
and then if that person goes down, it's not the auto rifle, and then the auto rifle will all take over. But if you're the person that's taking over, as soon as the person in charge goes down, you need to inform the squad leader and say, um, such and such FTL is down, um, such and such is taken over. And then when they're back up, let the FTL themselves report that they're back up and back on comms. Does anybody have any questions or problems with anything I just said? Uh, one remark in the last version of the medical thing, you can use the radio while you have vision. Right. Around. But okay. I'm not entirely sure if I like that yet, though. So I'll have okay. to discuss that with people. But even then, what, you can see for like five seconds yeah, or it's, something? it's so, short amounts. You can call in yeah. that you're down, basically. Yeah, That's so you've, pretty much it. you'll have enough time to say, you know, Jericho lead, this is Jericho 2, and then you blacked out again. I mean, I yeah. I like that idea a bit. You could, you could say, like, Jericho 2 lead down or whatever, but you might as well just leave it to just let the next person take over because then they can at least have a clear conversation. Um, you don't want... You don't want... Like, it falls to the auto rifle and the auto rifle starts trying to speak and then the downed FTL comes back into consciousness and starts butting into the conversation. It all gets garbled and confusing. Just, you know, don't bother. Just One, let the hierarchy do its job. And whoever takes over will take over. Yeah, there has been confusion, uh, especially in the campaign night last week. Yeah, so um, it's becoming more of a rule now because um, we've sufficiently discussed it. So FTLs have their discretion to designate whoever fills in for them. Um, but if they don't specify, then it's the auto rifleman. Um, finally, I'll say about gear. Uh, just because I've been asked to. Uh, don't take 20 mags on an operation night. You don't need it. Uh, if you've already been to Isson's lesson, you should know how to not need it. If you haven't yet and you're going to go there, he'll teach you how to not need it. You should only need about 6 to 8 mags for an entire evening if you're conserving your ammunition properly. Um, carrying 20 mags slows you down, tires you out. And with new updates that are coming to armor being tired, it's going to become a much Why? worse thing than it is now. Oh, you yeah, won't, I saw that. It won't just be a bit blurry and fuzzy and you'll be panting. You won't be able to use your weapon effectively when you're tired when that update comes. So reasonable weight limits uh, will become a lot more important. Hi. How are you guys doing? Hello. We have just finished. Oh, so I'm awesome. Just doing the rounds, checking if I can start TPing people around. I shall be back momentarily, hopefully. Where's your hat? Uh, it's in my bag. You got blown off by the teleportation winds. <laughs> so we're done here. Really? Traveling at the speed of light does that to you. Say again. We're done here. Uh, yes. You guys mount up. Fire break. Mount up first. If, if can you make... can, if you're not all enemies of each other. Yeah, I'll take it. You can go on your bio, and then we can just be.